time now for the week that was. Let's take a look at newspaper headlines that around the globe this week. And we'll start off with Delta State, as several houses in the Okuoma community in the Mumbadi local government area of Delta State were on fire hours after 17 soldiers on a peacekeeping mission were killed last week in that area. It is not clear who lit the fires in the community or if anyone died from these fires, but residents had fled to the neighboring Ugeli community for fear of reprisal attacks by soldiers. The military had said it would investigate the incident. As at press time, there was no indication that the soldiers were, responsibil were responsible for the burning of the Okuoma community. Meanwhile, the Delta State Governor, Sheriff Oborevori, condoled with the military and the families of the slain soldiers. The governor described the incident as despicable and not in sync with the culture and tradition of Deltans. He said his government would fish out those behind the killings and made sure they faced the full wrath of the law. After those sad events, the defense headquarters came out to deny claims that the military had embarked on reprisal attacks on Okuoma community following the killing of troops of the 181 Amphibious Battalion while on a peacekeeping mission. The DHQ was reacting to several allegations and videos on the incident. Arise News correspondent Ferdinand Duroha reports. It is more than 48 hours after news broke about the killing of military personnel on a mediatory mission in Okuoma community in Delta State, and the military says it has taken no action of repressal on the community. The statement by the DHQ follows allegations that the military had killed and burnt houses in Okuoma community. Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, says the armed forces, being a disciplined force that complies with rules of engagement, laws of armed conflict and respect for human rights, would be guided by these provisions. The Nigerian army has also called for a general condemnation of the killing of the troops in Delta State. Spokesperson of the Nigerian army, Major General Onye Mawachuku, says it is regrettable that a community complicit in this act has resorted to media propaganda rather than engage in a positive effort to fish out the perpetrators. Meanwhile, the DHQ has released pictures of the slain personnel and is calling for the public to resist the temptation of allowing any videos of their killing from going viral so they will not be dishonored. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tarid Lawaja, also has commiserated with the families of the deceased and directed that no stone should be left unturned until the perpetrators of these acts are apprehended and brought to book. Ferdinand Duroha, Arise News. Still on the Delta soldiers' killing, Senate President Goswe Lakpabio expressed doubts that the killers of the soldiers were from Niger Delta. During plenary, Senator Akpabio warned against hasty conclusions on the matter until the Senate's investigation is completed. Our rice correspondent, Omo Bazwai, tells us more. Senate observes a minute silence in honor and final salute to the 16 soldiers brutally killed in Okwama community in Delta State last Thursday. Condemning the killings, President of the Senate, Goswe Lakpabio, has strong reservations that those behind it are from the Niger Delta region, even as the back Senate resolution to investigate the matter and unmask the perpetrators. Your additional prayer should actually be to carry out a thorough investigation to know whether these were mercenaries from outside Niger Delta who came in to commit this crime, because I don't think these people are Niger Deltans. We are not at war, even in a period of war, to lose such number of personnel. No community will go to the extent of doing this kind of thing. I don't think they are from Niger Delta. The probe follows a point of order raised by the Chairman Senate Committee on Army, Senator Abdulaziz Yadua. Senator Ede Dafinone, who represents the area where the incident occurred, enjoins the military high command to tamper justice with mercy to prevent further escalation of the situation. I'm equally concerned and ask that the Senate show some concern that if the matter is not carefully handled, it might also lead to a further breakdown of law and order occasioned 
by a major humanitarian crisis within the riverine communities of Delta State, and therefore plead with Mr. President, the Defense Headquarters, and the Chief of Defense Staff to please temper justice with mercy. Since the incident on Thursday, hundreds of houses have been set ablaze with unspecified number of persons caught in the crossfire. While Senator Osita Izunazo wants the blame to go round, his counterpart, Senator Siraki Dixon from Bayeso State, cautioned strongly against the blame game until the outcome of investigation by the Senate, stressing that similar clash is already unfolding in Bayeso State. There is a situation also going on in Bayeso, in a community called the Bomotoro, in Southern Niger local government area where the military, for whatever reason, may be in connection or not in connection, but at the end of an inquiry, we'll know whether there's any link. Um, there are some casualties are here. Houses have also been destroyed and so on. Senator Hamel Lawa condemns the killings of the soldiers, adding that what happened in Okwama was carefully planned and executed. The deputy president of the Senate, Jubrin Brow, also condemns the killings. The Senate observes a minute silence in honor of the slain soldiers and called on the federal government to educate citizens about their civil responsibilities to security agencies in the country. It also converts recruitment of more policemen so that military can be relieved of internal security challenges. We are calling for investigation to unravel the corporates so that they will be brought to book. And I said that it is not in the character of our people to go killing and cutting off the heads of men and women in uniform. I'm a Niger Delta. I know this is totally uncommon. This is not something anybody will think of. This is barbaric. This is brutal. This is the kind of thing that you hear with organized uh, 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 terrorist groups. Some people must be declared as terrorists. The probe is referred to relevant Senate committees on defense and national security. Omo Bazwai, Arise News. Mm. One week after, uh, Okwama still reminds us of uh, the troubles in the Niger Delta. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look like we're anywhere close to having the complete letter of the truth. Everybody seems to have something um, to say. Uh, three interesting stories there on the development uh, that has happened uh, in Okwama. Uh, but I think that the most intriguing, uh, and that's not in any complimentary way, will be the uh, prevarication by the Senate president who's saying that, um, as it, you know, he was suspecting that mercenaries must have come to, you know, carry that out. I, I think it would, I, I'm not so sure if that's, um, that's even a sensitive thing to say at this point that everybody is carrying out investigation including the Senate itself. So coming out to jump on the issue and say that because it is not in the character of the Niger Delta, Delta uh, it will not have been carried out by Niger Delta. I think that's totally beside the point. What um, uh, everybody should agree on doing is carrying out full investigation as the president has directed um, and to um, tell the military to be guided by human rights considerations because of you know, the back and forth that everybody is hearing. Houses are being burned. Uh, people are running away from their homes and shelters. And that people have continued to die. Not just in Okwama alone, but like uh, Seriaki Dixon also said, it has also somehow spilled to bias her. You know, uh, one week after, we're not close to knowing the truth. And that's the concerning part to me. I mean, Shaito, you have some roots in Delta, don't yes, you? Yes, actually. Yeah. I'm sure that this will <laughs> yes. be um, of interest to you, isn't it? Definitely. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but my father is actually from Delta State. My mom is Yoruba, but I, I'm very Yoruba in my manner. Well, let's come back to uh, the story. I mean, first off, I commiserate again with the soldiers and uh, even the civilians who are now caught in between. Um, I agree with you 100% when you talk about an assessment. And I, I even believe at this point an independent assessment of exactly what happened in that community so that we can get to know the facts of what happened there. I was watching an interview during the week with uh, Mr. Abani Wanda Olufemi, who is the Delta um, uh, Commissioner of Police. And he spoke about the fact that 
even as of this mo as of the time the interview had happened that the police had not been able to enter the community mm -hmm. that it was only the military that had access to the community mm -hmm. and that in itself you know kind of raises an eyebrow because at this point we want to know exactly we don't we know that there, there have been you know people have run into the, in the the forest you know we have civilians that are hiding in shelters but we really don't know the extent of the damage journalists have not been allowed to go in we don't have any images there's no clear idea except for what's you know of course what we've seen in this particular um, vt and across uh, different uh, uh, media platforms um, to shift away from that, though, I just want to uh, touch on what the governor has done so far. You know, he has tried his best, uh, Sheriff Oborevo. Yes. Um, he's met with the military chiefs in, Buma, in Bumadi and Okwama. He said he's not been able to meet with the leaders of the community because of the current state of, you know, of, of the community as well. He's gone on an, ex an, on an inspection of the damage. And, of course, he has gone to give a first-hand report to the president, who in itself is the chief uh, chief uh, commander of uh, the of the armed forces of the federal republic of nigeria but again it looks as if the situation is getting worse and most importantly what is going to happen to the families of these officers you know what we did hear a senator fa fa dafinone come out to say that there has to be some sort of repress some sort of repressal some sort of um monies that is giving to these families they have to make sure that they are taken care of even after the fact so i think even though we know that this is going on, there's an independent investigation going on, we also have to bring the human face to this story Absolutely. because there are people, even those who have gone, have left yeah. people behind and something needs to be done to make sure that it doesn't, you know, on over... Both sides, on both sides, yes, actually. Both sides. Yeah. I think something here that is incredibly important is that we're now facing what is looking like a humanitarian crisis yes. in the Niger Delta yes. region. We've been told that mostly women and children have run into the bushes, have run into the forests, and are starving. They're hungry and they're afraid to return to their communities. Yeah. And so when we're having these conversations, especially when they're having these conversations on the Senate floor, we must also talk about the humanitarian aspect to this. At the end of the day, collective punishment is not justice and it's not just. And this focus on a reprisal attack, it also, I feel, diminishes what we're facing right now as the country at large. Because these tit-for-tat killings, these communal yeah. disputes, we've seen them in Benue, yeah. we've seen them in Niger, we've seen them in Katsina, mm -hmm. Kaduna, we've seen them in Plateau State. Yeah. And what we're dealing with is our military is now being forced to deal with what seems like very many internal wars happening all across the country. Yeah. And also, I would like to say that I believe what would it take for our president should actually show up outside of Abuja and Lagos or outside of an APC event to show that he cares not only for the servicemen who lost their lives, but for the people of the Niger Delta, the people in the creeks who are suffering at yeah, this as, very as moment. The chief chief, that he is. As the commander in chief yeah. and as the president of the nation. Yeah. Yeah. And as you said, that it's spilled over to Igbo Motoru yes. in Bayelsa State, yeah. where, you know, they are, the military is carrying out investigations, the Chief of Defense Staff mm -hmm. has said that they do believe they know the person who's yeah. responsible mm -hmm. for this attack. And this also shows... That's you, concerning, It's isn't very it? concerning, but it also shows that when we've been talking about all these allegations of bunkering and insecurity in the Niger Delta, that a lot of times if we pretend that something does not exist, mm -hmm. or if we close our eyes to it, it will only get worse. Yeah. This is for us very important as a nation. Absolutely. Yes you know, on, on all on, yeah. on accounts. Yeah. So. Why this is very important, just very mm -hmm. briefly before we move on to another story, is the fact that we, we must be careful in dealing with it so that we do not uh, willy-nilly bring back the era of militancy, oh, yes. you know, yes. when you now have young uh, men in the Niger Delta fighting back and destroying, uh, you know, assets of the nation. That's where we don't want to go. That's why this mm -hmm. has to be handled very carefully. All right, we'll proceed uh, to the next story. Uh, after weeks of the budget padding allegation made by Senator Abdul Ningi, APC Bauchi Central, which led to his suspension for three months by the Upper Chamber of the National Assembly, President Bola Tinubu has finally responded to the turn of events. I know the arithmetic of the numbers that I brought to the Senate and I know what I got back. I 
And I appreciate all of you for the expeditious handling of the budget. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so that's President Bola Metinubu there. Um, uh, I mean, I'm sure that many people have seen uh, the full clip of what his position is. I, I think it's important to first start from the point of view of the president. Mm. <laughs> As the defender in chief of his policies. <laughs> policies. Uh, this is not a during Galele <laughs> of Mr. Bayan Onuga uh, responding on his behalf. This mm. is the president. Uh, even though I think he took an almost time to think through what he was trying to say, I mean, didn't he? You mm. know, um, uh, which therefore means that he he said what he probably intended to say, which was to say that I know what I what I supervised mm. and what I signed off on, mm. and it comes to the arithmetics of what budget is all about. That is an interesting, you know, submission by the president of any nation. Because my understanding of what has happened, and this is not about Senator Ningi, mm -hmm. this is about what we see or what we perceive uh, the 2024 budget to be. It isn't, especially even if you take just the 3.7 contentious, you know, trillion, I don't think that people are saying that it's about the wuru wuru to the answer. No, mm -hmm. it's not about the total that people have issues with. It's about the processes. Yeah. It's about the fact that uh, it's in Kuwait. Definitely. It's about the fact that we do not have an idea of what the president says he knows. Mm. And that when it comes to appropriation, because you are, it is the people's money. People need to know. If the money is for the military, or for INEC, or for the judiciary, or for anything, what are the fine lines? What are the processes that led to 3.7 trillion being given? But in any case, it's even beyond that. It's about the totality of the 20, 2024 budget. And I think that part of what the president should be concerned about um, should be that his legacy will not be what Senator Olamile Koyai is projecting yeah. when he said the other time that this is not the first time that we would do this. That's not the, le you know, that in, 20, in 2021, in 2022, in 2023, that that's how we have always been doing it. I don't think that the president got into office on the basis of continue with anomaly or aberrations, especially when it comes to appropriation law. To now come out and say, it doesn't look like those who are criticizing understand arithmetics. Uh, I mean, I, I hope that he has not unwittingly insulted in the intelligence of Nigerians, because frankly speaking, he really shouldn't be defending the 2024 budget in this manner. This one. Well, I would, I was, you know, I was confounded by that statement by our president because I, to my knowledge, that budget was returned to him on the 31st of December and he signed it on the 1st of, the, of January. So he must have really gone through that arithmetic, you know, he must have stayed up. With I mean, additional one point something trillion. With the additional money. And another thing is when he talks about the arithmetic, I would like to talk about the arithmetic of the chief of staff to the president's office, which now has a thousand times more Absolutely. in their budget than they did in 2020. Absolutely. A thousand times more. Yeah. We're talking about billions of naira going to the chief of staff's office. We've spoken about line items of the budget, the six billion going to the cars in the presidency. We've spoken about, and, and now specifically what Senator Ningi spoke about was constituency projects. Yeah. We had a senator, Jerry Best, stand up and say Absolutely. some of us got 500 million, some of some us this. 250, 200. But when you look at the the allegations going to the Senate president and the amount which has been dedicated to his senatorial district, that's Senator Akbar Bio. And even you look at Senator Ndume, who's part of the um, principal members of the Senate, he has a billion naira going to build classrooms and fix solar lights in Borno South region. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. We have roads in Lagos and Surulere, which is the former chief of staff's um, area, where you have over five, six, seven billion going to the rehabilitation of interlocking of estate roads in Surulere in, in Nigeria. Yeah. So this arithmetic that the president is talking about is very bizarre to me because I believe now he's taking responsibility yeah. for every single line item in this budget. That, that, he's that, taking responsibility for the fact yeah. that 65% of the Ministry of Agriculture's budget is not going to food security and you have 
you have more money in the Ministry of Agriculture going to installation of solar, solar lights panels. and uh, solar yeah. panels <laughs> than we do to inputs and to our agriculture and our food security. Mm -hmm. So now the president has said, you know what, the buck stops with me. And so yeah. therefore, we must hold the president responsible yeah. for this budget, which That's is what it means. absolutely That's what it means. to the line item. <laughs> he, he needs to, actually, I, I want him to explain the arithmetic of why his chief of staff's <laughs> office is a thousand times more expensive. <laughs> 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 You have, you have both touched on it quite well. I think I, what I just want to add to this is, at the end of the day, what the Nigerian people want is transparency. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, when you look at the allocations that are excluded from, from the budget in itself, that alone is something that we need to look at. You know, the t theft fund, what's going to the National Judicial Council, what's yeah. going to the National Assembly, yeah. the Public Complaints Commission. You can't just come and say, oh, we're giving these uh, people $700 billion. We're giving these the people... senators do not like to talk about they, they, how much they're getting like yes. and how they're yes. spending. Yes. How, That's still this. And you, this, is, this, is still, this is an administration that came out few weeks ago and said, oh, we're going to take the cost of governance seriously. <laughs> we're going to fully implement the unnecessary report. Th this just, just doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't go. Doesn't and matter. when we even look at the distributions of projects by value, mm -hmm. we have, we're seeing 7,000, over 7,000 projects that were inserted in the budget after the fact. 55 of those projects range, um, range uh, between, uh, range from the value of 580 billion and are generating 5 billion in value. And then we're seeing 281 projects, what's 491 billion inserted as well in the budget. Why not, you know, we, are, we can all I'll, see I'll, these I'll things. I'll be very concerned if, if the president, you know, um, um, raises up the 2024 budget as yes. an ideal type of budget that we define is four years because frankly speaking i, I think mm -hmm. that it was voted in to bring uh, you know uh, uh, some changes uh the 2024 budget is not the type mm. frankly speaking yeah. but do you think be. this is where the conversation will end in regard to this budget now that it the president has said that he has challenged us so we, we have to take him up on his challenge and the auditor general will always be there so the accountant general will be there There's, it cannot the He's book not does not stop here and no. the defender in chief didn't really it mm. will have a lot more to defend. <laughs> to defend. Alice, well, let's move on to the next story. Well, let's take our next story. The United Nations designated the 22nd of March as World Water Day to celebrate every year. The main objective is to promote the responsible use of this invaluable and finite resource and advocate for safe access to water for everyone. In the words of UNICEF, it is a means of focusing attention on the importance of fresh water and advocating for the sustainable management of fresh water resources. It is about taking action to tackle the global water crisis in support of Sustainable Development Goal SDG 6, Water and Sanitation for All by 2030. Well, water and sanitation for all by 2030. I wonder if us in Nigeria and members of the Global South are included in that. <laughs> Obviously, the preservation of fresh water sources mm. is really important in terms of sustainability and yeah. you know our sustainable lives here. Yeah. But the reality is that most Nigerians do not even have access yeah. to fresh water. No, but they're having their borehole projects, you know, as part of the... Um, uh, of the budget. budget. Solar so, powered. Yes, solar <laughs> powered. <laughs> I mean that 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 underscores the you know the, the I mean it evokes laughter you know mm -hmm. when at this point uh, what the representatives of the people uh, will be concerned about will be the borehole boreholes and boreholes and solar you know solar panel issues we can provide uh, a power electricity to our people mm -hmm. we can even give them you know portable water we're mm -hmm. now saying. Uh, a senator, a uh, 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 sunk how many balls in his constituency. At this time, in this age of the Lord, I mean, I can't even recall if I heard anything yesterday being World War today uh, from uh, the minister in charge. I mean, it's supposed to be that the, there's a gentleman in charge of water resources, isn't, yes. isn't it? Yes, you know, what, is. how, how are we keen? into the aspirations of, you know. Have you heard anything from the gentleman in charge of water resources? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's it's if you are, ministry. please remind me. Huh? <laughs> it's been very quiet in our ministry, but I mean. A, a number of uh, ministers have been very quiet. I agree. Yeah. I, very I, really I, quiet. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why that is. Water, water, water everywhere, but not mm -hmm. a drop to, to drink. Mm -hmm. yeah, that has always been the catchphrase uh, over time. But mm -hmm. I thought that yesterday would be an opportunity to have an idea as to uh, where we are headed in terms of water and sanitation, like you said, but I'm not so sure. 
if we got anything uh, of note, you know, from the federal government. Mm, definitely. Um, I mean, th there's really not much to say when, mm -hmm. when we think about this. Uh, I was reading a report about exactly where we, where we were uh, with, you know, the, the, the state of our water resources. And uh, this report just reads that our sanitation and hygiene sector has actually been declared to be in a state of emergency. And approximately 60 million Nigerians up until date are still living without access to drinking water. So yeah. for celebrating World Water Day, I hope that the ministry or at least 60, 60, 60 million 60 right million that's, that's that's a lot of, that's of people that's almost like 90 percent of the entire united kingdom Definitely. population not Definitely. having access to to water that's yes. sad so i don't think it's a, it's really a day yes. to to celebrate, celebrate world us, water day but yes. a call to action mm. uh, to make sure that this in itself is changed well, let's move on now to our next story. The world ends this morning coming to terms with the news of Friday night's terrorist attack and bloodbath at the Crocker City Hall, a prominent concert venue near Moscow. At least 60 people have been confirmed dead thus far. The incident is being called the deadliest attack in Russia for nearly 20 years. At the scene of the mass shooting, investigators walked through the night to gather evidence, including abandoned weapons and ammunition left by the gunmen. As for the attackers, Russian officials have said that very have said very little about who they were or where they are. There were indications last night that they had escaped and that police was trying to hunt them down. A branch of the Islamic State group says it's carried out the attack. Moscow has yet to comment on that claim. And President Vladimir Putin has yet to make any public comment on the attack. In Moscow and other towns and cities across Russia this morning, electronic billboards are showing a single burning candle and the word skobim, which means we mourn. We mourn. Mm. And very, very. And, and we mourn mm -hmm. uh, with Russia, yeah. uh, frankly speaking. You know, uh, more than 60, uh, as at the last count, yeah. and about 150 uh, injured, injured so far. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, we mourn with them. Our condolences and our hearts, you know, go to uh, the victims. Uh, like the report said, you know, uh, is, is, is the worst in Russia in the last 20 years. I mean, the, uh, 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 those that would be considered far worse would be those days of the Chechnyan uh, terrorists, 800 yeah. people being taken, you know, 235 killed, you know, half of them children, you know, but here we are. Uh, surprisingly, a uh, few days, about a week or uh, mm -hmm. a few days after uh, the resounding victory, mm -hmm. you know, by, by Vladimir Putin yes. uh, as, as the president of Russia, and a few weeks after Tucker Carlson's, you know, extensive interview, uh, uh, we do not know what has happened. Yes, uh, a branch of the Islamic, you know, state, just, you yes. know, uh, uh, Linkly, you know, taking credit for it. But then what is this all about? Things are still a bit hazy. Uh, Putin himself has not yet responded. Uh, we know what it means, but what uh, what will be an issue will be the fact that uh, the U.S. government did issue yes. uh, an advisory yes. Yes. Uh, just a few a few weeks ago. I think early uh, March nine was was it not? Yes, you the know US about the fact Russia. that yes, yes, that this uh, that you know that uh, an attack was, was in the offing, yeah. uh, large spaces, you know, concerts, everything. And it turned out almost exactly like the U.S. predicted. Sometimes we play politics with it. Mm. And I recall that it happened in Nigeria too when they warned about Abuja and then the federal government fired back about, oh, how yeah. about we warning our citizens in America about different sort of shootings going on in cities. But here we are. Russia now seems to be dealing with shall we call it negligence, yeah. uh, maybe, you know, on the part of, 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 of the Kremlin? Yeah, well, I will say, you know, that when the U.S. Embassy in Russia issued their warning earlier, we did have Vladimir Putin come out, I believe it was Tuesday earlier this week, and call that warning provocative yeah. and say they were trying to destabilize his yeah. country. But I do think that that might ha also have been him posturing mm -hmm. because it has been reported that Russian security agencies had actually thwarted at least three possible terrorist attacks in March alone. I think it was on the 3rd of March, the 7th, and on the 20th. So just three days ago, there was another attack which 
was possible terrorist attack, which was mm -hmm. allegedly thwarted by the Russian security agencies. Yeah. I think what this shows, because it's very reminiscent to me on the attacks in Paris, mm. um, the concert attack in Paris, and also yeah. what we saw in the Ariana Grande um, at um, concert in yeah. England, where you have concert venues where people, you know, it's terrorism to these large areas yeah. spread across Europe, and we do have ISIS or similar right. organizations taking credit for it. It's frightening to see the spread Very. of this type of terror mm. in places that we would not imagine. Moscow yeah. seems like somewhere where it's maybe cushioned or safe. And, and you know, originally people were co considering maybe is this related to Ukraine? Mm. But now that we're seeing that it's ISIS-K, which is supposedly <laughs> a branch of ISIS that is in Afghanistan, we have ISWAP here mm -hmm. in Lagos. It's actually frightening for us to think about in what I, it Nigeria, means. Mean Sorry, exactly. I meant in Nigeria <laughs> we have ISWAP, uh, you know, and, and Boko Haram. But what I'm saying is that it's it's, it's actually frightening, yeah. frightening to yeah. think about how ISIS and these terror movements mm. are gaining a foothold across the globe. And I and I think this is definitely it's a, it's a huge tragedy. And I hope that the people of Moscow and the people of Russia take heart and I pray for the families of those who lost their lives. Yes. Um, terror. And be united in defeating terror. Yes, terror we in need any to guys. be. Yes. In any guys, yes. You know. yes, definitely. Yeah. definitely. definitely. Uh, I mean, we're looking at a hole that could take approximately 6,200 people. You know, the fact that, and it was such a popular um, uh, concert hall, even mm. based on what's out there. And, you know, the fact that 145 people were injured, 60 people killed, 60 people still waiting to, we're still waiting for, to see whether they're critical condition or not just shows you know how you know how big this attack mm -hmm. was Definitely. and like you said the fact that it's even just happening a few days yeah. after you know his uh, supposed uh, uh, <laughs> victory I really I, I'm sure I, <laughs> stage managed <laughs> elections I mean, oh really I didn't know about that <laughs> I'm sure at this point, you know, the Kremlin and you know, and, and his team is yeah. doing everything to make sure that they get to the bottom of this. Just like you rightfully said, a lot of people would imagine that Russia would be a no-go, you know, area, you know, yes. especially with who they have in charge. And it has nothing to even do with the Ukraine war. So that really raises an eyebrow. Yeah. And it's just all the ter terror yeah. that's happening around the world, yeah. really. We really need to buckle up our boots and, you know, just make sure Tough that... Times uh, yeah. Tough, Tough times everywhere. Tough times everywhere. But, but no, again, our hearts are, are, you know, with, with the Russians yes. Yes. at this time and, and beyond politics, you know, yes. uh, the world should stand with Russia yes. to defeat terror. Any Definitely. terror, terror in any guys, you know, uh, uh, must not be allowed to thrive. Definitely. All right, then, that's all on the week that was.